primary sclerosing cholangitis, and also abbreviated PSC is what we'll discuss in this video. And as you can deduce from the term cholangitis, uh, this is inflammation of the bile ducts. Um, and these bile ducts can be intrahepatic or extrahepatic, either in the liver or outside the liver. And what happens is, let's say we'll draw just one bile duct here, like that. What happens is, now there's many, many bile ducts in the biliary tree. What you have in PSC is basically a system of fibrosis, inflammation, and scarring, and strictures. And I'll draw a diagram to illustrate what happens. So you have a bile duct that's nice and healthy up here. But then in PSC, you have these strictures that form. And then you have these dilatations. And then again a stricture. And then a dilatation like that. And so on. And this appearance is known as beading or bead, beads, or beading. It's often referred to as that. And that can, of course, as you can imagine, lead to obstruction. Now, why does this happen? What is the reason? Well, this happens in the setting of inflammatory bowel disease. And almost every licensing exam question that has mentioned PSC in it will have a patient with inflammatory bowel disease, and in particular, the one known as ulcerative colitis. So a typical uh, question will be, a patient has ulcerative colitis, then develops the symptoms of PSC. So why does this happen? It happens because in inflammatory bowel disease, you have these autoantibodies, and these autoantibodies are responsible for an immune-mediated uh, destruction of the bile ducts. And of the bile ducts. And that's uh, really the big correlation uh, between inflammatory bowel disease and PSC. So um, right before I get into the symptoms, I just want to mention that it's more common in men uh, seventy percent of the cases are in men and on average you're looking at about a person who's about forty years of age so the symptoms is a classic triad for PSC and that triad is a little bit different than most cases of cholangitis um, that triad is fatigue pruritus or itchiness and jaundice these three are uh, almost always present with PSC. And if these three are present uh, in the setting of a patient who has inflammatory bowel disease, or in particular ulcerative colitis, then it's almost guaranteed to be PSC, primary sclerosing cholangitis. There's two other uh, very important symptoms, of course. Right upper quadrant pain and uh, fever. Um, that can definitely present. So how do you diagnose this? Uh, there's two very, very uh, fancy or expensive tests uh, that have big long names. And um, this is recommended first, and this is second line. MRCP, what is that? Magnetic Resonance Cholangiopancreatography. Big long name, right? Basically, it's, it's an imaging test. It's an imaging test that allows you to see the hepatobiliary system. And it's considered the, the best test to diagnose this, to see what's going on. The second line, or second choice, is an ERCP, which is endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography. Um, that's also a very... Uh, important test but it's a bit more invasive so they usually have it as a second choice. A very important lab test that's a simple blood test is an alkaline phosphatase level 
and clinical vignettes will mention this because this lab value will be elevated. The liver function tests can also be elevated, but they can also be normal, interestingly. But ALKFOS, I abbreviated ALKFOS, is almost always elevated. So lastly, what is the treatment? Well, remember we talked about those strictures? Well, those need to be dilated if possible to help with the proper functioning of these bile ducts. And that's done via ERCP, ERCP dilation, uh, if possible, really just of the major strictures. Um, and then eventually, this becomes so um, eh, difficult to treat that you really need to transplant, liver transplant. And that's the ultimate um, result, is the only treatment really that improves life expectancy. So uh, let's uh, take a look at some vignettes right now. 32-year-old man presents with complaint of severe pruritus over the past two weeks. He has a history of ulcerative colitis for the past seven years, which has remained well controlled on sulfasalazine and cortisone enemas. Physical exam is unremarkable except for evidence of diffuse, diffuse excoriation on his extremities and trunk. Lab studies reveal a mild iron deficiency, normal electrolytes. LFTs are normal except for an alkaline phosphatase of 322. Which of the following is the most likely explanation for his symptoms? Well, that's a very, very good clinical vignette that describes a patient with ulcerative colitis uh, who's got um, symptoms of uh, uh, PSC. Now, the classic triad, if you remember, is fatigue pruritus and jaundice um, but this this patient doesn't have enough clues he's got EUC he's got pruritus he's got a very high alkphos so it all points to PSC which is primary sclerosing cholangitis and last one 30 year old man with 15 year history of ulcerative colitis develops intermittent cholestatic jaundice ultrasound Exam fails to reveal gallstones. Liver biopsy demonstrates a large bile duct obstruction. Uh, which of the following would most likely be seen on endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography, ERCP? Well, if you remember, I, I kept mentioning that you have these strictures followed by these dilatations in PSC and then these dilatations and this uh, is this process or this way of the bile ducts appearing is known as beading or beads and that is actually described very nicely by the first uh, answer choice which is beading of intrahepatic bile ducts so that would be the correct answer choice.